Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo iPad tutorial and this is the Beginner's Guide Part 6. Now I want to look at macros, uh, using macros and sort of downloading macros. So I've got this picture here which is a picture I took of a bird in my garden but we're going to add macros to this or use macros on this. If I hold down the question mark symbol in the bottom right corner, you can see that the macro is on the right hand side, it's the fourth one up from the bottom macro studio, which is that sort of triangle pointing to the right. So if I click on that icon, we have the default macros. And if I just click on the word default and move to the left, you can see we have some others here that we can use. And let's go with light leaks. And then in the menu, get rid of that menu. In the menu here, we have different lens leaks. So I'm going to, I don't know, let's try hot day. You click on that, you just have to wait while the app will follow all the instructions as you can see there are 10 steps in that instruction whereas like red streaks is 55 steps so that will probably take longer so if i click on that one we just have to wait a bit because there's 55 steps for that macro to go through and basically all the macro does is it is a recorded set of steps be, you know things like duplicate layer or add an adjustment or anything like that so the more steps that you take the longer it will take for the iPad to process it it goes a bit quicker on my PC and I would assume on Apple Macs as well if I come to the layer library uh, studio as you can see, this has all been done on one layer, so it's been destructive. Um, you, you can't sort of go back apart from doing the undo button. But you do still have the controls at the bottom where you can alter the noise and the light, and the fade and the brightness and tint, things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the beginning well, I just had my picture there um, get rid of that. Um, so I'm going to come back to the macro library and like I said you do have other options here some of these I've downloaded like the mystical lights macros I downloaded those from my um, account at Serif, much like I did with the assets in the previous video. So let's have a look at what we got here. It doesn't. A lot of these names don't give away exactly what they do. And we've got this one here. Flip vertically. We'll click on that, and nothing seems to have happened flip horizontally no we've got screen blend add blend mode yeah, see a lot of these it's very hard to work out what it is they are doing we come back to layers it has added an extra layer in this case so I'll just delete that So that is basically how the macros work. It's just a set of steps. Now, I'm guessing that some steps may not be sort of usable within the iPad. because they, they all have to be made on the PC or the Mac. If I come to the macro menu and click up the top here in this menu icon, which is three lines, all the options you have is remove category, rename category, and import macros. 
You cannot make your own macros on the iPad. They have to be made on a PC or a Mac. And the, and the other thing you have to be aware of is that on a PC or Mac, you can make a single macro. And when it saves out, it is called AF macro. But if you make multiple macros and save them as a category, the, the file name will end AF macros with an S on the end. Now, the iPad can only work with the AF macros format. So even if you make a single macro on your PC or Mac, you'll have to save it within a category rather than a single macro. And then that category can then be imported. So I'm going to click on import macros and this will, I've saved it into my iCloud drive and I've just called it iPad test macros. And as you can see at the end, it's got AF macros with the S on the end. So I'll click on that and that will be installed into the macros. So if I open up this menu, we've got iPad test macro. And as you can see, there's only one macro in there, which I've named high pass with vivid blend mode. It's only three steps, but all it will do is duplicate the image layer, add a high pass filter, and then change the blend mode of that layer to vivid light. This will help sharpen the image. And let me just, if we come up closer to this bird, hopefully when I run this macro, you can see, you know, it sharpen the image. I will just click on this to run that. And then come to the layers menu. And as you can see, I have the layer duplicated. It's got the high pass filter added and if we look at the blend mode, it's got the vivid light blend mode. And if I turn this on and off, that is without this added, and that is with that added. So hopefully you can see the difference that that very simple macro has made just by adding three steps. Um, so basically that is how macros work and how you can download them from like a, a cloud drive or you could sort of email them to yourself um, but it's really the only way to get new macros into the iPad and it doesn't mean it's going to work 100% perfectly on the iPad I would possibly advise keeping macros simple because um, there might be some features on the iPad that don't uh, that don't work once they're transferred over from the PC or Mac like there's some of those mystical lights macros that I tapped on none of them seem to do anything so maybe those sort of steps can't be done or maybe I'm just doing something wrong but I would advise keeping macros fairly simple if you make them on your PC and Mac, or if you download them from Facebook groups or the Serif forum or anywhere else, is well, the simpler they are, the more likely they are to work okay on the iPad. So that is pretty much it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.